Hi there, it's Abigail from The Creative Bix. Today we're going to talk about fonts. We're going to talk about how to identify them, where you can find them, how to download and install them onto your iPad or your device, and then we'll talk about how and where you can use your fonts, on what software, and then I'll also show you my favorite fonts somewhere in the video. So watch the whole thing so you can find out what those are. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you can find out what font somebody uses. So I use a lot of fonts in all my artwork. And the first thing you want to do in order to identify a font is you're going to take a screenshot of whatever font you are looking at, whatever font you want to identify. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this quote by Nelson Mandela that I made. And then we're going to crop it so that I only have um, that specific selection in my picture. Cropping will just help reduce the file size and it'll also make it a little bit easier for the next software that we use to identify your font. We're just going to save that to our camera roll and then from there I'm going to take you to a new website. To identify a font I usually use what the font. There are other options but what the font has been the best for me and you have an option to upload an image so we're going to tap that and then we're going to tap the photo that we just screenshotted and we're going to use it. From here the website will identify what it perceives to be a font and from here you can choose which word you want the website to use to identify the font. So it has a pretty good selection of hope, so I'm just going to go ahead with it. And now the website will generate all the fonts that are very similar or exactly alike to the font in the picture. There are also options to purchase all of these fonts right here on this website, so you can do that as well. Another website that offers amazing fonts for purchase is Creative Market. They offer a really wide range of beautiful fonts that are very professional looking, groovy, anything you want um, in fonts they have. Another great website for fonts is Design Cuts. They have a really wide range as well. I also really love using free fonts. The first website where I get my free fonts is Fontspace and the second one is 1001 Fonts. Something really important to note about these free font websites though is that the licensing um, most often will be for personal use. So you can see with these yellow and red tags on 1001 Fonts, um, all of these fonts are for personal use. You cannot use them commercially. This basically means you can't use these fonts in products that you will sell or make money off of. On Fontspace though, if you tap that little check mark next to commercial use, you will see all the fonts that you can use that you do not have to pay for, you do not have to pay for a license. All of these you will be able to use on commercial products. So now I'm searching for a font that I want to download and I think I like this no virus one. So we're going to tap this little cloud over here with the little arrow pointing down and from there once I tap it a little download pop-up will appear and we're just going to tap download. Now your font should be downloaded onto your device. Let's download a font from 1001 fonts as well. To find fonts free for commercial use go up to the categories section and under special you should be able to find that category and you'll have a wide range of fonts that you can use for commercial purposes as well. And you can see with this little green tag here that it indicates that you can use this for commercial purposes. So then tap the green download and then download again and it'll be on your device. Now if you tap on one of these files it will open directly in the files app. And these fonts downloaded as zip files so if you just tap them within your iPad they should open up the folder right there. However, if they do not directly open up in your files app, I like to use the app unzip. So what you'll want to do is go to your files app and tap on that zip file that won't open, and then you'll long hold press and tap share. And then you're just going to open it in unzip. From there, your zip file will be imported into unzip, and then just tap on it, and it'll open a folder just like it would have done in the files app. Now tap on the text file, and then tap that share button, and you're going to open it in iFont. And I forgot to mention, but iPhone is free as well as Unzip. Both of these apps you can get on the App Store, and they just make it really easy to download and install your fonts onto your device. So I just tapped iPhone there, and now that text that I just downloaded is in that app. So we're going to do the same thing with the other font that we have downloaded, but I'll do it within the file app just to show you how easy it is. So you have that folder open from the zip file, and then just tap whichever text file you want to import into iPhone. Now you're just going to tap that little blue install button and from here a pop-up window will appear and you're just going to tap allow and close. So then after you've tapped that directions will appear um, showing you how to continue to install this font but I'm just going to show you right here as well. So we're going to go into our settings and then from there you will see that it says profile downloaded right up here at the top. Now all you need to do is tap install and it'll prompt you to put in your password and I'm going to do that and then you'll just tap install and then install again. Now your new font is downloaded onto your device. Then you can just repeat these steps with the other fonts that you've downloaded. 
So back in the iPhone app, you'll tap install, you'll tap allow, and then you'll open it in settings, and you'll tap profile downloaded, install, enter your passcode, and then from there install and install again. Now we can add fonts in our artwork. So back in the app Procreate, I'm going to tap that wrench tool, and then we're going to add some text. Tap that double A at the top right hand corner of your keyboard, and then you can change your font from here. So I'm going to select that bold font we downloaded, and then we're going to go back to the keyboard and let's type, um, let's type, I love fonts. Okay, now let's tap that double A and go to our settings, and if you see that cursor right now, it doesn't have anything selected. It's at the very end of our words, and nothing is really going to change in our settings except for that alignment, but all of these other settings that I'm messing with right here, nothing's going to change. So what we have to do is we're going to unselect all of this. So we're going to tap either the done, you can tap the move tool, tap layers, whatever, to exit out, and then you're going to edit the text again, go back into that A tool, and now you don't see the cursor right there. Everything is selected, and now you can change the sizing, you can change all of these settings. You just want to make sure your font is actually selected and that you don't have that cursor blinking at the end. Um, and if you want to change something individually, you can always select the letters by themselves, but I generally like to change everything as a whole. So that's how you use all of that, and I'm just messing with settings right here. And I'm going to show you that double T over here, that works um, to make everything capital or lowercase, but with the font I'm using right now, everything's already in capital letters and it doesn't have any lowercase options available. But you can mess with the kerning, which changes the spacing between individual letters. You can mess with the tracking, which changes the spacing between the letters overall. Um, leading changes the space between the lines of text, so you can make that space very wide or you can make that space really small. So just depends on what you want. I'm just going to put that back at zero. And the baseline is where the letters sit, so you can change that baseline to be pretty high up, or you can lower it down. Just depends on where you want that as well. Now I want to show you my top five favorite fonts. So I love Keep On Trucking, I have Maroche, Popstone, The Beardy Pro, and Groovy Script. Those are my favorite five fonts, and I want to show you their product photos because they look really cool. Beardy Pro, that's what that looks like. I got it off of Creative Market. Popstone, also got it from Creative Market. The Groovy Script, love it. Um, Maroche, Tropical. Um, that one's really fun. And then Keep On Trucking I got uh, from Defont.com. And this one's free, but this one does not come with a commercial license. So if you do want to use it, um, you have to use it for personal use unless you contact the owner um, and see if you can get a commercial license for that. But everything else I got from Creative Market. And those all I did purchase. Now with the Groovy Script font... That one is specifically really cool because it has alternatives and swashes. And so what I mean by that is, I'm going to go into the internet browser to show you. So this font has a lot of different kinds of letters. So you have so many different types of endings for these letters and you have lots of alternatives and swashes, but you can't use them in Procreate. So I like to use the app Affinity Designer and with that you can access all those alternatives. So I'm going to tap artistic text and to add text you tap and drag and and then we're just going to type the word groovy and I'm going to select my groovy font to do that. And then I typed it pretty large so I'm going to tap my move tool and we're just going to make it a little bit smaller so we can see it. And then obviously I typed U there so let's change that to a Y. And then to access the alternative letters we're going to tap the lowercase a on the right hand side over here. Then we're going to tap typography. From here you'll get a whole list of options of alternatives and swashes that you can use. Um, and all you're going to need to do is select a letter that you want to change um, and then you can tap on all these options and go through them and see what you like and what works best for your composition. And this font has a lot of alternatives and not all fonts will have this many alternatives, if any at all. Uh, so you just want to check that before you purchase or download a font if you want to have alternatives. Once you're happy with your composition, you can keep it in Affinity Designer and keep editing it and create all your text effects and colors, or you can export it. I normally export it as a PNG into Procreate, and I go from there and do all my artsy stuff. So that's what I did, and I created this. I hope this was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching!